All right, welcome to a new video, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I'm super excited. In the next few days, I'm gonna set up a new tank again. But we do have a bit of an issue. I currently already have nine tanks up and running and I don't have room for more tanks. So if I wanna set up a new tank, we first have to get rid of one of the older tanks. And the one that's gotta go is this one right here. This used to be the Red Plants only Dutch style aquascape and it's now been heavily neglected for the past two months, I think. Yeah, the last time I made a video about this tank was in the middle of February. It's now middle of April, so exactly two months ago. Um, back then it was looking really, really good. And after that, I kind of started to neglect it. To be honest with you, I think this aquarium was never really a great success. Now, I did really enjoy this tank, don't get me wrong. But the reason I'm saying it wasn't really a great success was because it never really turned out the way I had planned in my head. So this was supposed to be a red plants only Dutch style tank. So no hardscape, only plants, and I selected plants that would grow either red, orange, purple, pinkish, just something in that range. Um, but that never really worked. First of all, I bought a rare plant that was supposed to grow purple. Turned out I had the wrong variety. It only stayed green. <laughs> Lucky me. And there were two other plants in the background that needed very high light and very low nitrates. Also never worked, even though at some point I had two Chihiros on here on full power. Didn't grow super red. Um, what else? The trimming of this tank was a lot of work. I mean, for example, with this tank, I can just trim everything. And after two, three weeks, everything will look good again. Everything is in a nice shape. This aquarium, I had to take a different approach. Like some plants would take a lot longer to grow back than other plants. So I first had to trim the slow growing plants, then wait a few days, trim the not so slow growing plants, wait another few days and then trim the fast growing plants. And then after two weeks, everything would, would have grown back properly and the tank would look nice. And then that only lasted for a few days and then everything had to be trimmed again. So it was always yeah, a constant trimming session going on in this tank with a lot of work. And then it made, that made it very hard to enjoy this tank. So I think two months ago it was at its best shape. And after that, I kind of just started to neglect it. So the plan for today is to just take this tank down. I'm actually going to replace it with something new, uh, something a little bit bigger as well. So that's exciting. So we have to take this tank down, see which plants we can still save. Um, we also have to catch all the, the guppies that are in here. Um, I also want to keep the filter running because we can use the, the beneficial bacteria for the, for the new tank. Alright, making good progress. So the reason I first trimmed the plants instead of just ripping them out is just to keep the water clear so I could, you know, catch all the fish because we have a lot of baby guppies in here. I wanted to get them all out. If I would just rip out the plants like this, you know, that would just create a massive cloud of dirt and you, you can't even see what you're doing anymore. So I first trimmed all the plants, kind of see what uh, what we can save. One thing for sure is these massive clumps of Boese Vlaanderen. It's beautiful. This is the uh, Kenna Gang. I bought one in vitro pot and it grew like crazy in a few months only. Uh, the Alternatera Reineke is still quite nice. We can definitely keep that. The rest was kind of infested with some hair algae, so we might still save some, but... Oh, and of course the, uh, the, the Cryptocorine Flamingo. It's not super pink anymore because it was kind of deprived of light, but uh, we can definitely save that. So next step is to drain even more water. Then I remove all the, the roots basically and the, the plant leftovers and then take out the substrate, clean the tank and then get our new tank in place. All right, a few days later, the previous setup has been cleaned up, removed. So all ready to get started with our new build. I'm so excited about this one. Let's get the tank in first. Yeah, there's just something about an empty aquarium that gets me very, very excited. So yeah, this is our, our playground for today. Uh, this is the Stridewaze Duro 45P. I've done a couple of these Stridewaze tanks on the channel lately. This is the Duro range with the 45 degree mitered edges. So the glass is cut at a 45 degree angle, then glued together. I'm not sure what is the exact reason behind this, if it's just for aesthetics or also for ex extra strength. All I know is that it, it looks quite nice. And the light is the Twinstar C series. This is the 45C. Cool about this light, it has like a little dimmer. Might be a bit hard to see on camera, but it has like a 15 step 
dimmer. So that's the, uh, the tank and the light. And then for the filter, I'm actually going for the hang on the back filter this time. So on the previous setup, I had a huge uh, yeah, external canister filter still in here. It's still up and running. It's connected to the 70 liter scapers tank right now, just to kind of save the beneficial bacteria. Yeah, this filter is uh, was way too big for, uh, for the previous tank as well. And I kind of want to make these setups a bit more accessible for everybody, you know? So a nice hang on the back filter, a bit cheaper. And of course, full transparency, the tank, the light and the filter were sponsored. I didn't pay for these products. I got them for free. So there's something funny going on with this cabinet. So the 7 liter scape tank is completely level. You can actually check the, the water surface. You can see that it's even on all sides. But this one looks completely crooked on camera. So I whipped out this uh, tool. I'm not sure how you call this in English. And checked it. And it was indeed not 100% level. So I put in a little piece of foam mat underneath just to kind of balance it out. And now it is level. But I'm curious what's going to happen once we, you know, add some weight to it, fill it up with water, add some hardscape. We might have to add another piece. So it's not really ideal, but yeah, I guess that's what happens when you buy cheap stuff. Of course, this cabinet is normally designed to have a, a tank over the entire length of when you place two separate tanks. I guess it starts to cave in in the middle or something. Doesn't matter, let's continue with the build. So from now on, I want to do things a little bit different on the channel. Like in the past, when I was planning to make a new setup, a new aquascape, I would spend a lot of time thinking about the hardscape, thinking about the plants, thinking about the equipment. And the fish kind of just came later. Like I would finish the setup and then once it was cycled, I would just go to the shop, see what they have available, see what I like and just go with that. It wasn't really in the planning. So now I want to flip things around and actually start with the fish first. So this setup is going to be a setup for the neon green rasboras. Super excited about that. I've never kept them before. And a few days ago, I was at my local fish shop, Hames. They had a really large group of them. I'll put a, I have a clip on from it. I'll put it on the screen. So super excited about that. So normally I would start off the build by placing some kind of background on the tank. I always like to use this uh, cheap stuff. This is the milky window film that you can find at your local hardware store. And I'll put this on just to make sure we don't see the, the wall behind the tank basically, just to make it a bit more, yeah, better looking. <laughs> um, but for this tank, I'm actually gonna use the exact same thing that I have on this gram right here which is an illuminated background. Let me actually put it on. Here we go. So that looks pretty cool, right? It's like an LED panel just behind the tank. It's very slim, only like a centimeter thick. Inside there's some LEDs that you can dim. Pretty cool. So I found another uh, secondhand light screen uh, a few days ago, and that would be pretty cool to have two light screens side by side. I just hope that it will fit behind the tank because we also have the hang on the back filter there. But I think, I think it should work. Okay, let's talk hardscape. I got a couple of really nice pieces of, um, this is called end wood. And I've used this wood once before in the Guppy Fry Aquascape, which I've set up four months ago now. And this stuff is really, really easy to work with. So for example, in the 70 liter scape tank here, I've used the traditional spider wood, which we all know. And we also all know that it releases a lot of slime in the beginning. It's a bit annoying, it's a bit disgusting. It can also melt your plants. So it's a bit more difficult to work with. This stuff on the other hand, it doesn't release any slime, it doesn't release any tannins, so it doesn't have any effect on the water parameters, which is really, really good, really easy to work with. So I have three pieces of this, and then I have a couple of rocks as well, which is uh, really cool. This is like some type of lava, so but it's a bit more dense, a bit more dense than your traditional red lava or black lava, so it's a bit more heavy. It has some really nice texture to it, some really nice color, and I believe it's called relief stones. Anyway, I'll put the name on screen if I pronounce it wrong. Now, to be honest with you, whenever I'm setting up a new aquascape and whenever I'm filming the video, I don't just come up with the layout just like that. I always take a few days before to kind of play with the hardscape, see what I like and come up with something nice and then plan my planting around it. So it's never just out of the blue like that. There's always some, some planning done beforehand. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this was kind of the rough idea that I had in mind. I think if we still need to tweak it a little bit, for example, the tip of this tip piece of wood is directly in front of the outflow from the filter, so that's not ideal. So we need to move that a little bit that way. And yeah, I think besides that, it actually looks quite good already. I think first up, now we move in with the aqua soil. So another thing that I kind of want to focus on more with these build videos is to actually use products that you guys can get as well. And so for the past few build videos, I was using the Aqua Rio Neo Soil, but that one is actually very hard to get. Like here in the Netherlands, there's not a single shop who currently has it in stock. So today we're going to try a different brand. And I found this one. This is Master Soil. Uh, I heard a lot of good stories about this one. So uh, there's a uh, few people that really recommended this one. So let's give it a go. Okay, that's interesting. The first thing I notice about this new soil is that the, uh, the grains feel a lot more tough, like they're being baked at a higher temperature or something. They don't really turn into powder that easily. I've also managed to place that piece a bit more upright, so now it's, you know, it's not blocking the flow. It's still kind of hiding the inflow pipe. Only the, the rocks here, they've kind of been, yeah, they kind of disappeared. So we need to pull them out a little bit more, so they're a little bit more visible. But I'm uh, quite enjoying this hardscape. I think it looks very good. I like this space here in the middle we can nicely fill it up with some plants so let's pull out those rocks a little bit and then we can continue with the planting i guess oh wait no we first have to glue the hard skip together of course otherwise the wood is going to float I think that's the hardscape complete. Yeah, I think it looks really good. So I've mostly raised those two rocks in the back corners just a little bit, just to create more layers, you know? So we have a layer of soil, layer of wood, layer of soil, uh, rock, and then another layer of soil behind that, basically. That's most important, to create those layers, you know? Same thing here, soil, rock, soil, rock, soil. So everything is now secured, everything is glued together, or the cotton pads are covered with that soil dust so we don't see it anymore. So I think we are now ready for planting. So if you watched a couple of my videos, you may have already figured out that I'm a bit of a plant geek. I get very, very excited about plants. Um, but I've been in the hobby for like seven years now, I think. So I tried a lot of different plants as well. So one thing that gets me even more excited is trying out new plants. So I always get all my plants directly from Dendler Plants. Uh, they're a channel sponsor. And every time around this year, they kind of release some new plants. So maybe some old plants from their assortment that don't really sell very well, they will remove. And then they will add some new plants just to kind of try out and just to make it more interesting, you know? So all these red labels that you see here, those are all the new plants. So starting on this side, we have Rotala Laos. We have a new type of Cryptocorin. This is the Crypt Legroy. Ludwigia Inclanata Verticellata. It's going to be absolutely beautiful, that one. And over here we have the Persicaria Sao Paulo. This one is going to be super, super red. Very curious about that one. And over here in the top, we have a new type of Anubius as well. This is Anubius Mini Kirin. So this is a little bit like a, uh, a sneak peek into uh, what's coming from Denla Plants soon. Pretty excited about that. Of course, they're very, very small right now once they will be officially released and you'll buy them, you will get a much bigger uh, quantity in the pot. I'm not sure if we're going to use all of them in this tank, because it's quite a lot of different varieties. But uh, yeah, let's just see how much we're going to use. Okay, so we're all ready to start planting. Now me personally, I like to plant in wet soil. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add like a liter of water, just to kind of saturate the soil a little bit, just before we start planting. You can also plant in, in dry soil, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's just personal preference. And then the rest I'll just give a little light spray just to saturate the top layer as well. Okay, so as always, we're gonna start with the foreground. And to be honest with you, I've had a lot of going back and forth with the carpet plant. At first I was thinking to go with a, uh, 
cosmetic sand in the foreground and no carpet. And then I had an idea to go with Monte Carlo as a carpet. But I've done a lot of carpets with Monte Carlo already. And so I decided to go with Liliopsis. And you know, the last time I did a full carpet with Liliopsis was probably either 2018 or 2019. Anyway, a very, very long time ago. And the reason I chose Liliopsis is basically because it's a bit more low maintenance as well, comparing to, for example, Monte Carlo. So Liliopsis, right now it looks a little bit silly because it's very, very long. I probably should have gone for in vitro Liliopsis, but uh, my initial plan was to use Liliopsis kind of here in the, in the mid-ground as a transition from the other carpeting plant, so it would be nicer if it was a little bit taller. The thing is with Liliopsis, once you trim it, it will stay quite short as well, so... It might look a little bit silly in the very beginning, very long, but uh, I think it will be cool. I think it's also important that I show different plants on the channel, you know? Like if I would always have a carpet with either Monte Carlo or Cuba or Hairgrass, like you'll get bored after a while as well, you know? You want some variety. So I'm actually very, very excited to have a carpet of Liliopsis. It's quite an easy plant as well, like it's not super fast growing, but you can make a carpet with Liliopsis even without CO2 as well, so that's pretty cool. Okay, that's all the Liliopsis planted, kind of in the foreground, the sides, and also a little bit here in the middle. I think it looks really good. So these were six pots. Uh, I think if you were to use in vitro pots, you probably could have used only three, would have been enough. But yeah, I really like how it looks. I feel like it looks very, very natural, you know, like this is something you could see in nature. That, like a full carpet of Glossostigma, looks absolutely amazing, but it's not something you would see in nature, right? I think this is, yeah, more natural. Okay, now we're moving on to another grass-type plant. That's this one. This is Juncus ripens. I've been using this plant quite often lately, and I, uh, I really like it. It's very slow-growing, and under intense light, it can actually grow a little bit red as well. So I'm very curious to see if that's going to happen in here. I'm going to plant this one in the back corners, basically, you know, both left and right, just to kind of mix in with the Liliopsis. Then we're moving on to the, uh, the new crypt, the Crypt Legroy. So we only have three portions of this. One, two, three. And I'm thinking one over here to fill up this area. Uh, one in this little gap right here between the two pieces of wood. And then I have one more maybe in this corner over here. I don't want to put it here because then it will be too sort of symmetrical, you know. I think it's more natural if we put one here, one there and one there, sort of like a triangle shape. Now right now these scripts are still very, very small, but they will grow like, I think 10, 15 centimeters, something like that. Yeah, so I had three pieces of that uh, Anubias Nana Kirin, the special one. So the first one went over here, then I have another one over there in the back, and one more. This one is kind of my favorite. I think that's the best spot for that Anubias. So we still have a little bit of empty space in the background here, and here I want to plant different types of Rotala. So we have the new one, the Rotala Laos, I have Rotala Atra and I have Rotala Green as well. Maybe three types is a bit too much. Mm, don't know. I just want this middle area to be nice and red, you know, like a real focal point. So let's go here with the Atra and the Laos and then the Green. Yeah, maybe we'll skip that one. So this Rotala Laos is super, super small right now. And now that I've been to the greenhouse a couple of times, I kind of know the process. So these plants are actually coming from tissue culture and are then transferred to pots and then they're supposed to be grown out for like a couple of weeks before they're sold to the customer so normally this would grow a lot taller before it gets sold that's kind of the yeah that's kind of how it works i guess but mj was a little impatient mj wanted to have it now so that's why they're super small see here as a comparison we have the uh Ezra. these are proper stems I've actually cut them in half, so I'm planting both the bottom part and the top part. So this is like a good, uh, good tip, you know, if you want to have more, more value for your money, just cut the stems in half and plant both the top and the bottom part. Both of them will grow back absolutely fine. So this will kind of be the last new plant that I'm going to add. This is the Persicaria Sao Paulo. This is going to go super, super red, so it's like a nice focal point. So I'm thinking one over there, like just behind that intake pipe from the Waza filter, and one over here. So we have kind of one on each side. I think that will look really good. I hope at least. Okay, so we still have quite a bit of empty space on the wood right now. First reaction would always be to 
play some moss there, you know, like the, the, the usual. I want to try something a little bit different, something I've seen other people use sometimes. That is to use Monte Carlo basically as an epiphyte. So if you plant this, basically not in the soil, but somewhere on some hardscape, it will sort of start to like droop down. Looks really cool. I want to try it in this layout. So this is going to be very much an experiment, but for example, this piece of wood right here, I'm not really enjoying the big gap. It's very weird. So if I just take a little bit of that Monte Carlo, for example, this piece, if we just put that here, kind of let it grow down, 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 I think that will uh, look actually quite cool. Maybe not, but at least we've tried it, you know? So let's just glue it right there with some super glue. See, I've attached, I've, I've kept some of the rock wool on just so we can, you know, glue it properly. And let's just give it a try. I think that's it. I think I need to stop right now. Otherwise, I'm going to cover up too much with the hardscape as well. I was still thinking to add this one, the uh, Boost Getting Gang. But it's going to be too full. We're still going to have the crypt that's going to grow bigger over there as well. Uh, in this area, it's, gonna, it's all going to grow bigger, you know. So if you cover up too much now, it's just going to be too full later, basically. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I still have this one, Boost Flandera Micanta Needle Leaf. This one is super, super tiny. And it's in vitro boost. If I'm going to add this one to this layout now, it's going to melt for sure. So I'll add this once the aquarium is a bit more established and stable. I think it's time to refill it up, uh, start the filter, install the CO2, wait for the aquarium to cycle. So we're going to use cycled media from this filter. We're going to take some media from this filter, add it to this uh, hang on the back filter, and hopefully that will kind of speed up the cycling process a little bit. I'll keep testing the ammonia and uh, just keep an eye on it basically. Okay, fast forward about a month later, I'm on my way to pick up the fish. This tank has actually been a bit of a slow burner. We have a lot of slow growing plants, so it took a little time for it to develop. But uh, yeah, tank cycled so we can pick up some fish. So I'm on my way to my local fish shop, Hames. The reason I'm going today is because there's a little event going on. My fish shop is actually 200 years old. So the, today there's a little uh, aquascaping workshop. Workshop is hosted by Denla and yeah, very curious, so let's go check it out. Okay, workshop finished. Always nice to, uh, to attend these workshops. To be in a room with like-minded people, you know, people who have the same interest in the hobby. So Volker made a nice little uh, diorama aquascape. Of course, the main reason why I was here to pick up the fish. So fish are currently being caught and then we can go home again. <laughs> 